Hey guys, I thought I would show you guys how I do my fabric water bottles. These are the water bottles from Walmart. They're a dollar each. They come in all kinds of different colors. I just grabbed a uh, clear one out of the drawer. These seem to be a pretty good seller and they're fun because you can pretty much do anything you want on them. Just a matter of picking the fabric um, and, and going for it. Today I'm just going to do something simple. We're going to do this, um, this paw prints. Um, I have already cut it to not necessarily the length, but the width that I want. I always do extra fabric so that I have extra to play with to get a decent seam. I will admit doing the seam <laughs> was a lesson for me. I had to do it several times, um, and I still sometimes will mess it up, but that's okay. You can rewrap it. Um, I, um, yeah, so I'll go over how I do all that too, and we'll go from there and how we trim the bottom and the top and um, I generally try to put the top where I want it to stay so I don't have to mess with trimming the top and then sometimes I'll do glitter on the top so we'll, we'll just kind of see how how we feel about it when we get to that point so you're gonna need your water bottle whatever fabric I choose remnants and quarters and um, I just keep a stack of different fabrics to do like I said the sky's the limit you can pick Whatever you want, I have bandana fabric and Batman and Toy Story and so really whatever you want, um, you can go with. So, okay, so you will need a big brush. You will need your Mod Podge. I do, uh, like I've always told you guys, I put a little bit of water in my Mod Podge, not a lot, but it is pretty thick on its own, so I, I do add a little bit um, to thin it out a little bit. Um, first time I did this, I don't know what I did. I, it was a mess. So I will tell you, don't be afraid to use a lot of Mod Podge. You're going to really, really want to make sure this thing is sealed and that the epoxy is not going to get into the fabric when you put it on there. So you're going to let it really dry as well. I put Mod Podge uh, underneath the fabric, on top of the fabric. I let it dry. I put it on again. I let it dry. I put it on again. Sometimes it's three or four coats. And that's really what you're going to have to do. Um, and that's how you get the good effect once the epoxy's on. Um, but yeah, so I just take my... What I would normally use for my arm on my spinner and I add some masking tape to make it a little bit wider then I just electrical tape it on there and it works fine you can spin it it protects the threads for me so it works good so just start slapping it on so I'll put on a little bit just to get the fabric going And like I said, I, I cut the fabric more for the around than the length because you can trim it and I will trim it. So it's not really as important. Um, and I try to keep the top where it's going to stay. If you do it too high up here, it's going to wrinkle the top. You can't get a nice smooth fabric. So I keep it a little bit lower and then we can embellish the top if we want. <laughs> don't, that's, don't do that to your brush. Don't, don't do like I do. Um, and it's okay, you get the, you know, you get the Mod Podge everywhere, it's not going to hurt anything, and I'd rather have too much than not enough, and my brush does not want to stay. But, um, and I won't trim it or do the seam until at least one coat of Mod Podge is dried on here, um, because getting that fabric stiff helps you with your seam. So don't be afraid to get dirty either, because the more you're going to be able to touch the fabric and all that, the better you're going to be the smoother it's going to be um, and it's just Mod Podge is going to wash off. So obviously we're going to get completely underneath done. So I cut it a little bit long. You don't need it necessarily that long. Like I said, it's better to have a little extra to play with than not enough. And then you can hold it and just pull it. Now if you use a knit fabric, something that's real stretchy, it's going to be real easy to distort it and a harder, it can be done, but it's going to be harder. Um, you can also try to match the seam. Um, I have yet to find a pattern fabric that gave me the ability to do that. And I match contact paper all the time and I've not been able to do it on the bottles. So, um, okay. So as you can see, we want to try to keep that pretty level. You don't want that to be crazy uneven. Like I said, you don't want it up too high. That's a personal preference on my part. I don't like the wrinkly, the wrinkles at the top. So I would prefer to have it a little bit lower. And if your seam's beautiful and you can keep it that way, that's great. And if not, you can add some glitter 
because we know glitter fixes everything. <laughs> it hides all mistakes. So, okay. And then you're going to want to go back over and you need the outside of the fabric. And let it soak all the way through. You want your fabric wet with Mod Podge. You do not want to worry about not getting it wet, keeping it damp. You want it soaked through. Remember, you're sealing the fabric onto the bottle. Just keep going over it. try to get that seam and how you cut it to match and don't have it overlapping and all that. I watched several YouTube videos um, to figure out the best way to do it. So I'll kind of show you what I, the best practices I took from all those fantastic ladies who went before me. So I go ahead and let it overlap and then I will take my fabric and just fold it. And that's going to let you kind of Seal it a little bit, but still leave this flap because you're going to need, uh, it, it makes it easier for you to do the seam. And you'll, you'll see when we get there, it's a little hard to describe. Um, but basically, I just make sure I've got my coating on both sides. Go ahead and fold it over. You don't want it to seal closed, which I've done that too, um, because you're going to actually pull that up when you go to do your seam. So really, that's just like kind of like when you twist your tape so you can find the end of it. That's kind of what you're doing. And this is the time you're going to go through any wrinkles. See, we've got wrinkles there. Don't be afraid to yank it. At this point, you've got enough Mod Podge on there, so it should not come flying off. Don't be afraid to do it, to attack it like you attack. Attack it, method. Make sure you don't have any air bubbles under there. I see that's pulled my seam over too far. Do you want to overlap it half inch, maybe? And I just try to get, uh, it, <laughs> most of this gets cut off, but just uh, my, my uh, particular self, I try to keep that in a pretty straight line. And I just go through, make sure it's smooth. Make sure there's no wrinkles or bubbles. All right, so that's your first layer. Um, and then what you're going to do is we're going to let this dry all the way, or at least... I don't let it dry all the way at this point. I'll, it's almost dry. Then I will go ahead and put another layer of Mod Podge on, let it dry, and then I'll cut the seam. So as soon as it gets to the point where I can cut the seam, I'll be back with you guys and show you how we do that. And then I'll also show you how we're going to trim the bottom. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. It's pretty easy. It's not a whole lot of steps to it. And it's like I said, it's fun because you can pick whatever fabrics you want and just get creative with it. I'm looking forward to the fall Halloween. I've got some ideas. <laughs> so anyways, okay, I will be back with you guys as soon as we're to the seam cutting point. Okay, so we're dry now. I cheated a little bit and <laughs> used my um, heat gun to get it dry so I could show you guys how to get it trimmed and all of that. Okay, so I'm using X-Acto knife, brand new blade in here. So it is super sharp. So you wanna be very careful when you're doing this. Um, and ruler. So what you're going to do is you're going to take, see where we did that flap over, and you can kind of see right here this line, that's where the other end of the fabric is. So you're going to cut between this bend and that piece of fabric. It's actually it's down here. So what I do is I just find a place, oh yeah you can see it right there, I don't know if you guys can see that ridge. So I find a place. You know, not not on that ridge, but not too far away from it. And I just kind of use the ruler as a guide. Um, you know, I don't completely depend on it for support or anything because it can easily slip. So it's really just a guide, and I just kind of put pressure on the bottle 
and then you're going to cut and this is the most nerve-wracking part but it's got to be done so and you can do you know light slices to begin with and then kind of go down from there if you want or you can just do nice deep to begin with so you're going to cut that you're going to pull off of this layer nice clean cut then you're going to lift this up and you're going to take this out that was a prize for whatever reason was not clicking with me and I was having the hardest time figuring out how that was done so then once you do that you should be able to close this back down and you have a perfect seat and then oh, I'm going to do it right now because we're going to turn the bottom bit then we're just going to Mod Podge over everything again. Uh, but let me show you trimming the bottom. Now see now my lines are still, still to the point you can manipulate it, which is good. To get that. Sometimes I've waited for it to get too dry and it is a beast to get that extra piece of fabric out from underneath. So almost dry is a good medium. All right. If you guys have been watching videos on tumblers, you have probably seen this before. Um, I ordered it off Etsy. It is so great. I had made my own. Let me see if I can find it. Whoa. <laughs> nice. Uh, there's a razor blade in there. So I had made one where you just hold that down and spin the cup. This is much easier. But that does work. It's just electrical tape, popsicle sticks, and a razor blade. So really you're just running a sharp blade um, on a level surface because you can get an even cut around the bottom. So... I don't worry about the extra fabric when it's only that much. If it was um, enough to make it a height difference change, I would worry about it. I'm not worried about it at that. So it's obviously going to move your fabric a little bit. That's okay. So you're going to just you know, push it down, push it against there, and spin. I will say spin away from you. The first time I used it, I sliced my wrist. Not real bad, but bad enough where it startled me. So just be careful. I know I said away from you, but because it's still a little damp, I don't want it to pull on the fabric. See, like that. Okay. And then. I'm a mess, apparently. It is wanting to give me a hard time. It might be time to change out that blade. I have not, not done that. So, but just put it back down and re-slice it. You may not be holding it tight enough against the blade. There we go. Nice, perfectly even trim the bottom. Then I just trim the extra threads off. And just be careful with that. Like I said, when you're putting it up, it sits very sharp, so you don't want to cut yourself. And then you're going to manipulate it. So once you get it wet again, you're going to be able to manipulate it and pull that seam back together if need be. All right, so you're going to go back and we're going to do probably another two to three coats of Mod Podge. Let it dry in between each coat, and then you'll be ready to put on the epoxy. So I will go ahead and get these coats on here. Won't make you uh, watch drying paint, so to speak. And then when it's time to do the epoxy, I will be back with you guys, and we will go from there. I decided I wanted to go ahead and put some glitter on the top of this one. So my glitter chimp salt and pepper. And then I took some of my Mod Podge out and dyed it black with just acrylic paint to go underneath it. And that way it, um, I saw this, I saw it on YouTube the other day, the trick, and I'm like, that's a brilliant idea. But anyway, so it will kind of help it be more solid, I guess would be the best way to put it.
made it a little gray versus a little black, but it'll still give it that, that dark base. I want to be careful because the bottle itself is still wet, so if I just go willy-nilly with the glitter, it's going to go all over the bottle and not just on the neck on it, so I'll probably keep it angled downward, and we all know I can be a mess with glitter, so we'll try to make it not go everywhere. Okay. That's really pretty. I like that black and black and white on black and white. I think I might actually do the bottom. Yeah, I do the bottom also. What I try to do to make a kind of even line is I just use the brush as my guide. I'll make it the glue line the same width as my paintbrush. That makes a nice, you know, pretty straight line. I have to fix the top because I'm being a dingbat and just rub my hands all through the glitter up there. I don't generally do the whole bottom in glitter, but I think I might on this just to kind of see what it looks like, see if I like it. It might be pretty that way. I usually just leave the metal, but no reason not to do the glitter. And since there's plenty of glitter on the paper, I can just plop it down in there. A lot less messy than trying to get your, your bottom glittered. Alright, we're going to let it dry and then as soon as it's dry and I'm going to do epoxy, I will bring you guys back on and we will get it epoxied and go from there. Alright, see you guys in a bit. Okay, I'm back. For whatever reason, the footage I took of the epoxy and adding the decal did not record, so I apologize. Here are pictures of the final product. I hope you guys enjoyed this and it helped out a little bit. If you enjoyed the video, please take a minute to like, comment, subscribe or share the video i would appreciate it and as always everybody please stay happy healthy and safe out there and we'll see you guys again soon